The first of three two-day tests scheduled for before round one of the 2024 Superbike World Championship has officially concluded. Kareth has hosted most of the grid over the past two days, and here's your roundup, starting with your 2023 World Champions. It's been a tale of two halves inside of the Aruba IT Ducati garage. On one side, Nicola Bulliga has impressed again on day two on a qualifying tyre, becoming the only rider to drop into the 137s and beating the lap record by nearly half a second. His other laps, mostly short runs in the mid to low 139s, also compared surprisingly well to teammate Alvaro Bautista, whose best lap of 139.5 may be somewhat deceptive. The Spaniard has added six kilos of ballast to the bike in Jerez to compensate the new weight rules and is still struggling physically while riding the bike. 81 laps later on Thursday, questions do still remain. As for the independent Ducatis, Andrea Iannone continued to impress with the fifth fastest time of the day, despite suffering a crash between turns two and three. A late time attack by Sam Lowes also pushed him up to seventh overall, with 91 laps completed more than anyone else on the day. Danilo Petrucci was the fourth and final Ducati inside the top nine, with a Barney racing rider one of 12 to drop below the 139 mark. Day two also finally saw Michael Ruber and Aldi take to the track, with the Motor Corsa racing team opting to only use the one day from their allocation in getting the Italian rider up to speed. On to Yamaha, three riders inside of the top 10, and at the top of them all, Jonathan Ray, whose fastest lap put him second on the overall timing sheets. Beyond that, the Northern Irishman did a full 20 lap stint with consistent pace in the high 139s and low 140s. Teammate Andrea Locatelli didn't attempt a full race simulation, but did keep on working alongside new crew chief Tom O'Kane on his way to 10th in the standings. Two places ahead of him was Remy Gardner on the sole GRT Yamaha bike, with Dominic Egerter once again sitting out due to a suspected viral infection. Here's a hope and we can see the number 77 back in Portimao. The quartet of Yamahas was completed by Philip Ertel, his fastest lap put him just outside of the top 10 on only his second day with the GMT94 squad. For most of the day's running, there was only one non-Ducati or Yamaha rider in the top positions. And no surprise, that was Toprak Vazgat Yoglu, whose early 138.6 on a Q tyre was significantly faster than his best effort from the day before. That was enough for fourth position and a sign of progress from the BMWs on the softer compound. But Razgat Lioglu actually wasn't the fastest BMW on Thursday. That would be one Scott Redding, whose late run on a Q tyre lifted him to third overall. The final few minutes will have certainly instilled some confidence into the Bonovo team, not least with Garrett Gerloff's late effort also slotting him into the top six positions. Michael Vandermark was not able to set a fast lap in the closing minutes, ending day 13 overall. Meanwhile, both test riders Sylvain Gintoli and Bradley Smith also continued to work throughout the day with approximately 60 laps apiece. On the Kawasaki front, Alex Lowes was able to complete significantly more laps on Thursday after feeling unwell on Wednesday morning, with the number 22 doing several 8-10 lap runs and working on race pace. Axel Bassani actually completed a full 20 lap stint in the early afternoon, one of his first long runs on the ZX-10RR. That Kawasaki trio was completed by Tito Rabat, who reportedly ran out of fuel twice during the day and yet still somehow completed 71 time laps. The final manufacturer was perhaps also the most worrying one in Kareth, with neither Xavi Vierge nor Ike Lacona seemingly satisfied with the performance of the new Fireblade. At the back end of the time machine's over one lap and with frustrated gestures in the garage, are Honda in trouble in these early stages? It would be wise not to answer that question at least until Portimao. 13 Supersport riders also took to the track over both days, with several of them jumping onto their respective machines for the first time this season. But it was two regulars who set the tone on Thursday, with Stefano Manzi and Chan Onju half a step above the rest over one lap. Adrian Huertas on the Aruba IT Ducati and Bahatin Sofoglu on the MV Augusta made it four different manufacturers at the top end of the time sheets. That's all from Kareth, but testing resumes at Portimao in just four days' time. Stay tuned for more from Portugal.